Eternal Love Chapter 1 A Night to Remember After the prom party, Alex invited his girlfriend, Emily, to spend the night on a hill while gazing at the starry night sky. At that moment, Alex proposed to Emily with a simple ring, promising to marry her one day. Emily happily accepted the proposal and said that she loved Alex now, later, and forever. That night, Emily seemed so happy and hoped that their happiness would last forever. To Emily, Alex was her world, while Emily was Alex's true love. They promised to love each other until death because they believed their love was eternal. The two lovers, deeply in love, decided to go home. But on the way, a drunk driver crashed into their car, causing it to hit a guardrail and plunge into a ravine. Emily died instantly in the accident, while Alex was severely injured and fell into a coma. Their families were devastated by the incident that tragically separated the couple. They tried to come to terms with Emily's death and prayed for Alex's recovery, hoping he would wake up and continue his life, not knowing that Emily's spirit remained faithfully by Alex's side. Day by day, Emily's spirit stayed there, never leaving Alex's side, like a guardian angel always protecting him. Emily looked at Alex with love, wishing she could gently touch him, but her hand appeared like white smoke that couldn't grasp anything. However, this did not make Emily give up and leave Alex because she knew that sooner or later, Alex would wake up and realize her presence by his side. In the following days, Alex's condition began to show significant improvement until he finally woke up from his coma. Not only were his family relieved and happy, but Emily, who had always been faithfully by his side, was also very happy that her beloved had finally awakened from the coma. In the days that followed, Alex began intensive treatment to recover his condition, occasionally asking about Emily. Their families agreed to keep Emily's death a secret from Alex for a while because they didn't want Alex to be devastated by his girlfriend's death. Chapter 2. Lingering Presence At midnight, Alex woke up feeling a breeze on his face. At that moment, he sensed someone's presence beside him and felt a hand holding his. Not fully awake, Alex was convinced he saw Emily sitting next to him. However, the heavy drowsiness made it impossible for him to open his eyes, and he eventually fell back asleep. The next day, Alex told his mother about it, but she responded diplomatically, thinking Alex might be hallucinating due to the side effects of his medication. A few days later, Alex's condition improved significantly, and his family decided to tell him about Emily's death. Alex was shocked and devastated to learn that his girlfriend had died in the accident. He initially refused to accept the reality, insisting that he felt Emily's presence by his side while he was in the hospital. This made things worse as Alex suddenly refused to continue his treatment and often blamed himself for Emily's death. Knowing how deeply Alex was affected by Emily's death, Emily's parents visited him to offer comfort. Emily's mother hugged Alex and asked him to stop blaming himself. She said their family had accepted Emily's death and asked Alex to do the same. She also told Alex that he needed to move on and live his life well because she knew Emily would have wanted that for him. Hearing this, Alex stopped blaming himself, though he still couldn't fully come to terms with the loss of his beloved girlfriend. Sometime later, Alex finally recovered fully and was allowed to go home. After leaving the hospital, Alex visited Emily's grave with a bouquet of flowers. He couldn't hold back his tears when he saw the tombstone with the name of his beloved girlfriend who had left him forever. While Alex was overwhelmed with sadness and a deep sense of loss, Emily's spirit appeared beside him, embracing him in the void, hoping they could be together again in eternity. Chapter 3. New Beginnings In the following days, Alex decided to rebuild his life after Emily's death and continued his days as a student at the most prestigious university in the city. In his final year on campus, Alex met Sarah, a kind-hearted and caring girl. It didn't take long for Alex to fall in love with Sarah, and they eventually started dating. It seemed that Alex had forgotten Emily because he appeared to love Sarah deeply. Sarah's love and care helped heal Alex's heart, which had been deeply wounded by the loss of Emily. While Alex enjoyed a loving relationship with Sarah, Emily's spirit, which had been calm, suddenly became furious and showed a strong obsession with Alex. 
Emily's restless spirit began to create small disturbances to separate Alex and Sarah. Emily started to terrorize Sarah through a series of supernatural events and nightmares, affecting Sarah's mental state. Sarah told Alex about these experiences, but Alex thought Sarah was just stressed about final exams and suggested they go on a vacation. On the weekend, they decided to go to a lake because Sarah wanted to swim. While Alex set up the tent and prepared everything by the lake, Sarah, already in her swimsuit, decided to dive straight into the water. For a moment, Sarah felt her muscles relax, hoping to reduce her stress through swimming. However, as she swam further into the lake, she felt movement in the water, and at the same time, something strongly pulled her leg. Sarah tried to free herself and swim to the surface, but her leg was continuously pulled down. Underwater, Sarah initially couldn't see clearly and thought her leg might be tangled in something. But soon after, Emily's furious spirit suddenly appeared, pulling Sarah's leg strongly, dragging her to the bottom of the lake. Sarah struggled to breathe and didn't have enough strength to swim to the surface, eventually drowning. Meanwhile, Alex, realizing Sarah was not visible on the surface, dove underwater to save her. However, Alex couldn't find Sarah anywhere and quickly sought help. Shortly after, the police and a search and rescue team arrived at the lake and began their search. They found Sarah's body and rushed it to the hospital for an autopsy. The police initially suspected Alex of killing Sarah, but he was soon cleared of the accusation due to a recorded phone conversation with his mother at the time of Sarah's death. Alex was deeply shaken by Sarah's tragic death and blamed himself for suggesting the vacation. He never imagined that a fun trip would turn into a disaster that cost Sarah her life. After Sarah's funeral, the police informed Alex about the scars on Sarah's leg. Although they confirmed that Sarah died from drowning, the police suspected that something had pulled Sarah's leg forcefully, leaving noticeable scars. Initially, Alex doubted that Sarah could have drowned so easily, as she was an excellent swimmer. His doubts were confirmed when the police showed him the investigation results and photos of the scars. The police eventually closed the case, concluding that Sarah's death was an accident. Despite being deeply shaken by Sarah's tragic death, Alex tried to accept her loss and move on with his life. Sometime later, Alex graduated from college and got a job at an architectural firm in the neighboring city. He decided to move and start a new life in a new environment, hoping to heal from the deep loss after Sarah's death. A few months later, Alex, still hesitant to enter a romantic relationship, began to feel comfortable spending time with his colleague, an elegant woman named Rachel. When with Rachel, Alex felt he could share all his problems without feeling judged. Rachel was always an attentive and understanding listener, even when Alex talked about the tragic deaths of Emily and Sarah. Alex thought Rachel's older age made her see things from a different, more mature perspective. As time went on, Alex and Rachel fell in love and decided to start dating. They moved in together, living happily and full of love. However, Emily's spirit, possessive of Alex, began creating a series of terrifying events to drive Rachel away. Emily tried to intimidate Rachel mentally by causing supernatural phenomena around her and haunting her with nightmares. But Rachel, with her strong mind and logical thinking, remained steadfast by Alex's side, supporting him. Alex and Rachel got engaged and decided to marry the following year. They bought a two-story house on the outskirts of the city and moved in to discuss their future plans, including their desire to have children. While preparing for their wedding, Emily's restless spirit became increasingly aggressive, openly showing her presence by causing a series of supernatural events in their home. With the strange phenomena continuously appearing, Alex began to worry about their safety and urged Rachel to stay at his mother's house while he went on a business trip. However, Rachel, always thinking logically, reassured Alex and confidently said that nothing would harm her in the house. At midnight, Rachel, awakened by a nightmare, suddenly heard a woman's crying outside her bedroom. Instead of feeling scared, Rachel decided to check the situation, thinking that someone might have broken into the house. Rachel was sure she always left the hallway lights on, but strangely, when she stepped out of the bedroom, she found all the lights in the house had been turned off. She quickly tried to turn on the lights using the switch, but they remained off, making Rachel think there was a power outage. Meanwhile, the crying grew louder, and at the same time, Rachel saw a woman standing at the end of the hallway. Rachel thought the woman was an intruder, 
Not realizing it was Emily, the vengeful spirit determined to drive Rachel out of Alex's life. Emily then appeared before Rachel in the most terrifying form, causing Rachel to scream in fear and run to save herself. At that moment, the house suddenly shook violently, causing items to fall and furniture to shift, as if blocking Rachel's escape. Shortly afterward, Emily reappeared in front of Rachel and, using her supernatural powers, lifted Rachel and hurled her to the end of the hallway. Despite being severely injured, Rachel tried to get up and run toward the stairs. But unexpectedly, Emily was already there and quickly pushed Rachel, causing her to fall down the stairs. This incident left Rachel critically injured and in a coma. However, Rachel's condition did not improve and she eventually passed away. Alex was devastated by Rachel's death and once again blamed himself. After an investigation, the police concluded that someone had broken into their home and tried to kill Rachel. But Alex doubted this because he found no signs of a break-in, suggesting that Rachel might have known the perpetrator and let them in. However, CCTV footage from the front door showed that no one had come to their house that night. Chapter 4. The Haunting Continues Alex assumed that the supernatural phenomena in their house became more aggressive that night and attacked Rachel, leading to her death. Believing the house was haunted, Alex decided to sell it and move to an apartment in the city center. After Rachel's death, Alex spent more time working, hoping to distract himself from her tragic passing. One day, Alex received a call from a woman named Lisa, who was interested in buying his house. They agreed to meet at the house over the weekend to negotiate the price. Although reluctant to return to the house, Alex felt he had to explain the strange phenomena to Lisa to prevent anyone else from getting hurt. When they met, Alex was stunned by Lisa's almost angelic beauty. He explained everything to her, even openly sharing the incident that happened to Rachel. Lisa listened attentively and expressed her condolences upon hearing about Rachel's death. After hearing Alex's explanation, Lisa said she would let him know soon whether she would still buy the house. A few days later, Alex thought Lisa might have decided not to buy the house. But surprisingly, Lisa chose to proceed with the purchase because she liked the house and the peaceful surroundings. Alex and Lisa started meeting more often as she asked for his help in choosing new furniture for the house. Alex found Lisa to be a delightful conversationalist with a wealth of knowledge. They even discussed supernatural topics, and Lisa had a realistic view on them. She explained that ghosts or unexplained supernatural occurrences were manifestations of residual emotions or energy from the past that had not been properly conveyed. Alex was amazed by this idea and began to think that the mysterious deaths of Sarah and Rachel might have been caused by someone's lingering emotions or unresolved energy from the past seeking. Vengeance Alex began to wonder if someone from his past might have held a grudge against him, indirectly causing the deaths of Sarah and Rachel. However, Lisa mentioned that these feelings didn't necessarily have to be hatred or resentment. Excessive love could turn into an obsession, which might be even more terrifying than a grudge. Hearing this, Alex immediately thought of Emily, his first love who had tragically died in a car accident. Alex had promised to marry Emily one day, but death had separated them. For a long time, Alex blamed himself and refused to accept Emily's death because she was the first girl he had truly loved believing she was his true and only love. After all these years, could it be that Emily's spirit had stayed by his side, becoming jealous when he fell in love with Sarah and Rachel? Could Emily have turned into a vengeful spirit, causing the deaths of Sarah and Rachel because she couldn't bear to see them happy with Alex while her spirit was still lingering in this world? As Alex began to study ghosts and vengeful spirits, he grew closer to Lisa. As a horror story writer, Lisa often helped Alex with her knowledge of the supernatural. Although she couldn't see ghosts, Lisa was sensitive to supernatural phenomena, which was one reason she decided to buy Alex's house. Meanwhile, Emily, now a vengeful spirit, grew restless and jealous seeing Alex and Lisa's closeness. Emily started to terrorize Lisa by creating a series of supernatural events in the house. Additionally, Emily intensified her presence in Alex's dreams, appearing repeatedly. Alex dismissed these dreams as mere manifestations of his feelings and longing for Emily until one night, Emily's spirit appeared before him. At that moment, Emily looked as beautiful and fragile as she once had, making Alex want to embrace her. However, 
The atmosphere in the room suddenly became very cold, and Emily's expression turned frightening, glaring at Alex with fury. Emily then let out a piercing scream, so loud and deafening that Alex realized he was having a nightmare. The following day, Alex told Lisa about it, and Lisa finally revealed that Emily often appeared in her dreams as well. Lisa also shared the supernatural phenomena she had experienced since moving into Alex's house, but chose to stay there. Upon learning this, Alex decided to seek help from a priest named Father Thomas, who had experience dealing with supernatural cases and exorcisms. Alex told Father Thomas his entire story, showing him Sarah's autopsy photo with the mysterious scars on her leg. Alex also explained the strange circumstances surrounding Rachel's death and Emily's appearance in his dreams. Knowing that Alex was seeking help from a priest, Emily's spirit became even more aggressive in terrorizing Lisa, as Alex was trying to protect her. Emily's spirit not only appeared before Lisa in a terrifying form but also possessed her body, allowing Lisa to know Emily's tragic story and death. In that moment, Lisa also understood how Emily, once full of love and protection, transformed into a vengeful spirit obsessed with Alex. This obsession led to the deaths of Sarah and Rachel, the women Alex loved after Emily's death. While possessing Lisa, Emily called Alex and asked him to meet her on the hill where Alex had proposed to Emily years ago. Realizing Lisa's life was in danger, Alex and Father Thomas rushed to the hill, trying to prevent Emily from taking the life of another innocent woman due to her excessive obsession. On the way there, Alex and Father Thomas devised a plan to save Lisa and help Emily's spirit find peace. Father Thomas explained that Emily's spirit was restless because Alex had not yet fully accepted her death. Initially, Alex wanted to deny this, but Father Thomas pointed out the similarities between Emily and Alex's late lovers and how Alex sought to heal his loss and find comfort with other women instead of fully coming to terms with Emily's death. Hearing this, Alex finally realized his fatal mistake, which led to the deaths of innocent people. Father Thomas told Alex that the deaths of Sarah and Rachel were not his fault because Emily had become a very dangerous vengeful spirit. Therefore, they needed to get rid of her as soon as possible to prevent any more deaths. Upon arriving at the hill, Alex tried to persuade Emily to come closer to him because she was standing dangerously close to the cliff's edge, as if threatening to jump if Alex made her angry. Although Emily was possessing Lisa's body, she could change her appearance, so what Alex saw was Emily, his beautiful and youthful high school girlfriend. Alex kept coaxing Emily until he managed to grab her hand and quickly embraced her, pulling her away from the cliff's edge. At the same time, Father Thomas appeared and began performing an exorcism ritual, placing a cross and rosary on Lisa's forehead, while Alex held onto Lisa's writhing body as Emily's spirit resisted. Father Thomas started reciting verses from the holy scriptures he had memorized, while Lisa continued to writhe and scream in pain as the verses tormented Emily's spirit possessing her body. After a while, they finally managed to expel Emily's spirit from Lisa's body, but the vengeful spirit became even more furious and started creating physical disturbances to attack them. Father Thomas instructed Alex to protect the weakened and unconscious Lisa while he tried to fight off the vengeful spirit. However, Emily easily removed the cross and rosary from Father Thomas and hurled him into the trees behind them. Emily then focused her attention on Alex, who was still protectively holding Lisa. Despite Emily's terrifying appearance, Alex bravely looked into her eyes and begged her not to harm them. Alex then expressed his love and longing for Emily, apologizing for not being able to fulfill his promise to her. Seeing Alex's genuine remorse and guilt, Emily's anger slowly began to fade, and her form returned to her original appearance. Alex then confessed that he had made a mistake by trying to replace Emily with other women while Emily had always been one of the most important parts of his life and would never be replaced. He resolved to cherish the beautiful memories with Emily instead of constantly blaming himself for her tragic death. Hearing Alex's confession, Emily realized that she too needed to let go of Alex because death had separated them. She understood that her presence was causing Alex more pain, so she decided to allow him to move on and find his happiness. Knowing her time was running out, Emily approached Alex and kissed his forehead. Alex felt a slight warmth when Emily touched him, even though the atmosphere around him was cold due to her presence. Soon after, Emily's spirit slowly began to fade into white smoke until it finally disappeared, 
signifying that she had passed on to the afterlife to rest in eternal peace. Alex then thanked Father Thomas, but Father Thomas told him that he was fortunate because Emily's love for Alex was greater than her jealousy and anger. Sometime later, Alex decided to rebuild his life and let go of those who had passed. Meanwhile, Lisa recovered quickly from the possession and decided to stay in the house, as she no longer experienced nightmares or supernatural disturbances that threatened her life. Even though he and Lisa were very close, Alex chose to let things flow naturally. He didn't want to repeat the same mistake of using another woman as a means of coping in the name of love. Now, Alex believed that love would find its own way, and if they were truly meant to be together, then love would unite them.